Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at installing .NET Core in NanoPy K2 using RMBN. Yes. So we are going to use an RMBN OS over here. So the first step over here is to uh, download the RMBN stretch uh, desktop version. You know, we can use the mainline kernel version as well, but you know, since it's a, for the first time users, I, I would recommend to use desktop version uh, of uh, Ambient Stretch. You can either go with torrent or direct download. Uh, I have already downloaded the uh, Ambient uh, Stretch uh, desktop version. Yeah, it, it's based on an uh, Debian, uh, uh, you know, um, kernel. So I have extracted the uh, zip file to an image file over here. And, uh, and the next component that we would need is to have the... Uh, Download the etcher and install the uh, etcher. Etcher is nothing but just a flashing tool, um, you know, USB flashing tool. You just have to select the image, select the drive, and then click on flash. And then there you go. The flash will be complete. Yeah, it will take time. Uh, I have already downloaded and installed etcher. I uh, have an etcher also downloaded over here. And uh, so without any further ado, like we'll, let's quickly begin with the uh, steps. So next step would be uh, with inserting the micro SD card. Um, you know, usually they say we can have at least uh, 8 GB, but uh, I would recommend to have 16 GB because, uh, you know, you're going to run a .NET Core and on an Linux and you would need a powerful, uh, you know, a huge spacious micro SD. And also I would recommend class 10 uh, or above, which right now I'm using an uh, SanDisk SDHC. It's a high capacity uh, uh, so I'm just going to just um, select the image and I'm going to reinstall it on the same part. I have, uh, I have to select the uh, ambient OS over here. Click on open and the USB device is already by default selected. And the one which you just have to ensure that you're installing on the right drive. Click on flash. It might, uh, the etcher might require administrative privileges depending upon your logon. Um, it takes some time. So we have the uh, flash complete in the etcher. Now uh, let's eject the, uh, just close the etcher and eject the micro SD. And then uh, let's plug in on, uh, plug on to the uh, NanoPipe K2. And then let's see how the first. So I have the uh, NanoPipe K2 over here. I have connected the uh, you know, uh, the IPEX antenna. I have the inserted the uh, micro SD card as well. So I'll just quickly connect with the uh, power supplies and then uh, I'll come back. So for the power supply, I'm using an uh, DC 5 volt 2 power supply. So I have connected the uh, HDMI cable and everything. So I'll quickly uh, connect the power supply. It's a barrel type power supply. So give me a second guys. Yes, uh, I have connected the USB keyboard and mouse as well. So uh, this would be the first boot over here. And, uh, so it took close to uh, one minute and uh, you know one and a half minutes. So let me quickly uh, zoom the uh, camera over here. So the, the default logon for NanoPi K2 over the default logon for NanoPi K2 would be uh, root, and the password would be uh, one two three four. That's a default password, and you might have to change the power Password. So first password would be uh, 1234 again, then you have to insert the new password. Uh Here, what I have done over here is that I have uh, reset the root password and then I am trying to create a new user account. Yes, it, it would require a new user account. Uh, for the entering and you have to set up a new password for it as I, as I told you guys this is an uh, desktop uh, version of uh, you know NanoPi K2 you can uh, this supports uh, VNC out of the box uh, you know see all you need and VNC receiver on your windows and here we go the uh, ambient OS is booted and yes it's super fast so uh, so I have got the uh, IP address over here and the command I use to get the IP address is like uh, sudo if config. Um, all these commands, whatever I use inside the you know uh, over here in this inside this Linux, uh, I will be giving it in the description as well as in my 
website below so to connect uh, before we connect into the uh, vnc like uh, i would suggest to have the connection through uh, you know uh, through any ssh so here i use an uh, free ssh uh, putty or else you can call it as uh, putty or you know the way you pronounce so i just wanted to enter my uh, local ip address so i'll enter the local ip address is 192.168.0.103 um yeah it prompt for an uh, certificate error that's fine i would enter into as a uh, root you know just to have some uh, elevated privileges you can even uh, log in with the user account which you have uh, entered so here we go so we have the uh, uh, root logged on over here so the first step is to get the uh, sudo uh, you know update uh, the general system update I choose uh, Putty. Uh, the reason is it's much faster and uh, lightweight, and it's open source, and it supports a lot of uh, functionalities. So uh, it run uh, now. The uh, sudo update will be running. It will just fetch all the uh, Debian uh, uh, ARM 64 packages. And yes, it's a 64-bit processor, so the Nano Pi K2. So it goes on with the uh, uh, all the 64-bit uh, packages. So once the APT uh, update is done, then uh, we will move on to the, uh, uh, you know, Unwind 8 uh, library. It's nothing but uh, the one which is used to, you know, unzip the uh, items. So once the uh, library uh, Unwind 8 get text is done, so we'll get the, uh, you know, uh, .NET Core 2.1.2. Four zero one. So that's the latest, you know, stable release that we have, you know, at the time of doing this video. So we'll just do an uh, wget. So once the uh, .NET SDK downloader is done, now we'll make an uh, folder in the uh, opt optional, you know, we'll make a folder as .NET. And then uh, we'll try to, you know, unzip the uh, uh, .NET over there, uh, .NET SDK, uh, you know, tar over there. So to do this unzip is what we need the, you know, library unwind. So, uh, and then we'll create a uh, global uh, variable path over here, you know, global. We call we can call it as an environment variable in dot, uh, Windows. So we'll just uh, cre uh, create the environment variable. Now let's see the uh, not let's run the dot net command and see what version we have uh, you know got over here. So uh, the first time it takes few minutes you know to the dot net library to boot in. Now if you can see uh, the dot net core SDK is completely until now you know it, it but still it there it's been running on so many servers. So I have uh, run over here then a complete dot uh, net SDK. And then uh, .NET, uh, you know, runtime libraries as well. So uh, that's all for this, guys. Uh, if you like this video, give a thumbs up. If not, uh, let me know in the comments below. We'll soon meet with another video of uh, running an entire .NET application in NanoPy K2 with ARM and all that.